Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Adulting 101 Cooking. My name is Carrie Pannoni, and I work for Maryland Business Roundtable for Education, and I'm the Next Generation Scholars Program Coordinator for Allegheny County at Fort Hill High School. Thank you all for joining us today for our second in our series of six Adulting 101 workshops, and we are getting ready to to start our adulting 101 cooking workshop today. I see Finian and Will are just joining us. Thank you guys um, for joining us and we'll start with our introductions um, and I'll give you a rundown of what we're going to do. You know, a lot of you are looking forward to maybe going to college one day and I will say having raised two daughters who went to college, um, a lot of cooking happens on your own and we want to introduce some skills to help you with whatever life looks like beyond high school and it will help you with your cooking skills, um, you know, at home right now. So we just want to uh, start the program and I'm going to share our uh, PowerPoint for just uh, what we're going today. Let's just go over that quickly. So cooking, adopting 101, uh, we're going to do our introductions and then we're going to have microwave magic tips and tricks. She's um, our guest is going to do a microwave hotspot demo. Um, we're going to do a little scavenger hunt and we're going to have a cooking demo for a couple different um, things that you can make. We're, like I said, we're going to focus on the microwave today because in most dorms in college, you're allowed to have a microwave. So this will be very helpful for your future. Are you, are you listening to? Want me? You want to? Yes. Yeah. So um, let's see here. Yeah. So if everyone could mute their mics and Can you even list see? your name, yeah. your school, and your grade in the comments, and list your favorite food. And I just want to take a moment to introduce our guest today. That is um, Sarah Bernard. She's with the 4-H University of Maryland Extension Office, and she's going to be leading us on our throughout our demos today. And she's provided a lot of helpful um, videos, really short videos, and that are going to guide us through everything. Plus, I'll send you a recap video or a recap email after this workshop is over. So you'll have all the recipes and tips and information go. to help you. So go ahead and mute your mics now. right now, if you would. Just put the little um, microphone button and we'll um, allow Mrs. Bernard, Sarah, if you could, if you want to get started and I can uh, bring up. Let's see what's next. Everyone has put their introduction into the, the chat box, your name, your city, school, and your favorite food. The microphones are off unless you're speaking. You, you can use a raise your hand symbol to ask questions throughout the, the workshop and um, unmute to answer the questions. And if you could, please have your cameras on so we can can see everyone and interact. So our first thing up is microwave magic and our cooking tips and tricks. So can welcome. You see me, yeah. Can you see me, Connie? Can everyone see, see Miss Bernard and her microwave? All right. All right, Sarah, would you like me to pull up the microwave mm -hmm. tips? Yes, please. Slideshow? Okay, great. I think this is the right one. Here we go. Can everyone see this? Microwave magic? Sarah, can you see that? Yes, yes, I can see it. Okay, so we are going to have fun with microwaves today. 
One, two, three, testing. How does the microwave work? Sarah, go ahead and tell us all about what you have here for us. Okay, you want to take it to the next slide? Yeah. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about microwaves and um, some clean tips and that that we use in the kitchen. Um, and it's always important to know your equipment. So you need to get familiar with your uh, microwave. Uh, inside here, uh, there's information on your wattage and uh, different uh, cooking uh, temperatures and things like that. Uh, on mine, it's uh, actually wore off, so I d don't know what my wattage is, but you need to uh, know what your wattage is uh, on your microwave. Could you advance uh, the slide there, Connie? Oh, Carrie, yes. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on, let me get back here. Yeah, I've been calling you funny the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's all right. all right. I didn't even correct you. <laughs> here we go. So how does the microwave work slide? Yeah, you need it's still on the very first one. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Can you see that? What's a watt? No. Okay. Oh, it is, um, let's see. Does everyone see that? Thumbs up if you can see microwave watt, if you can see the slideshow. Thumbs up. Okay, good. All right, Sarah, maybe maybe you are just not able to see it. Do you want to just keep going? Okay, I will try. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let me see. Uh, let me grab my... Okay. Uh, always interrupted. They can, they can always um, reference the PowerPoint, you know, later. So if you want to continue okay. on. Yeah. Um, my cell phone is actually going off. I'm trying to get it turned off. <laughs> my son was calling. Okay, so how does a microwave work? Uh, microwaves uh, work uh, by the uh, molecules, the tiny molecules and particles uh, in the foods of the microwave. The heat goes through them like the sun uh, penetrates your face. That's by radiation. So if you rub your hands together and everything, you can feel the friction. That's how the microwave works. It's creating food. It, it gets that uh, heat going through that and it uh, zaps those waves through the food and it transmits it uh, into the um, into the food and that's how it cooks. Okay, depending on your wattage on your microwave, depending on your time, uh, most microwaves are somewhere from 600 to 1200 watts. And like I said, mine is an older microwave, so I can't see the wattage uh, anymore. So we can uh, do a little test for that so you can see I have six cups and in your when you review this it will show you how to do this but you number the cups one to six and you place them in your microwave I went ahead and filled them up already with water but fill them about halfway up with water and then you're going to set this for five minutes and as that's going around you're going to have to watch and you're going to watch the different cups and as they start to boil you're going to record that. So you need a piece of paper to record which cup. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. This is a different experiment. This is for hot spots. This is for your hot spots. I'm sorry. So for your wattage, we are going to fill up a microset way safe cup with one cup of water. In the middle, Shut the door, turn it on for four minutes. Then you're going to watch that and see when it begins to boil. 
So at um, one minute, first one and a half minutes, then your uh, microwave is 1200 watts. If it takes the full four minutes to boil, then that's 600 watts. So it depends on where uh, your water is. And I did this test here just a while ago and mine did, uh, it was like a minute and a half, almost two minutes. So my microwave is a 1200 watt microwave. So that is in your uh, in, uh, link there. So you can do that, test that uh, with your microwave if you can't read the label, okay? So, so you need to know how much wattage uh, your microwave is, that is going to determine how long you leave your food uh, in the microwave. There's three different types of cooking. Of course, we use the range, which is our stove, which we actually, the coil heats up, you put a pan on the stove, you heat the food. Then we have the oven uh, heat that um, you put the food in the oven and the heat goes around and circulates around and cooks your food. And then, of course, the microwave with the radiation, with the friction, and it's a lot faster uh, way to cook. Okay, we have some microwave safety tips and that that you need to follow. The main thing is use common sense. You don't want to uh, use your microwave if it's broken, if the door's, uh, something's wrong with it, never use your microwave with the door open. Uh, make sure that you use microwave safe containers uh, in your microwave, no foil or metals because they will uh, catch on fire. So there are some microwave tips there for you um, to go over. Okay, so now we're going to uh, test a microwave dish to see if it's safe. Because some dishes are safe, some are not. I have a um, some coilware here. And actually on the bottom of this, it says that it's microwave safe. So I know that. But if I wanted to, I could put a little bit of water in my bowl, put it in the microwave for about a minute. And I think this test is uh, on, on the slides. And if you pull this out and the bowl is hot, but the water inside is cool, then that is not a safe microwave uh, dish. If the water is hot and the dish is cool, then it's safe. So that's one way how you can tell if your containers are, uh, are microwave safe. And then there's going to be a little experiment later with that uh, also that you can do uh, on your own. Okay. Uh, All right, there, Sarah. Can, are you advancing the slides for them to see? Uh, well, I didn't pull that up because I wanted them to see you uh, do that. But I, um, are you ready for the hotspot demo now? Uh, let me see. Uh, I can well, run through. I already ran. The hot so uh, I'm going to do the hot chocolate demo. Oh, okay. For them? Well, we're we're already at two fifteen, so okay. maybe maybe we should do since they have the hot chocolate demo information in that slideshow that I'm going to share with them. Maybe we should do the hot spot demo, and then you can get into the um, and then while they're while we're waiting, I'll do the the scavenger hunt, and then we'll do the cooking demo. That okay, that sounds. It always goes much faster. We're trying to be, <laughs> we're trying to stay on time here, and uh, we want to be cognizant of of your time. We try to keep these workshops twenty minutes to thirty minutes, and I know we ran over a little bit last time. So um, she okay. is going to do the hotspot demo next, which uh, I never knew. Yeah, I always thought you just I always thought you just put your food in the middle of the microwave who here raise your hand if you thought you just put it in the middle and that's the best spot. I always thought that but apparently it's not. So 
Go ahead, Sarah. Yes. So when you cook with a microwave, uh, one section of the food might get uh, hot first, you know, then you take it out and you've got a cold spot and the other spot burn your mouth. Those are hot spots. So uh, one way that you can check to see if your microwave uh, has those hot spots uh, is to take your six cups, mark them uh, with a permanent marker, one through six, and then put them, arrange them into your microwave. Fill them halfway up with water. And we are going to put this on for five minutes and we have to watch. Mine's a little bit hard to see because it's um, kind of like a frosting glass. But when you turn that on, you can watch that and see which cup boils first. So because it's going around, and mine does have a turntable, which helps with hot spots. Uh, if you don't, then you have to rotate a lot of uh, TV dinners and frozen dinners says to rotate that if you don't have uh, the turntable. So um, are they going to do their scavenger hunt while we do this? Yes. While you're doing that, I want everyone to take a quick second. I have um, the scavenger hunt uh, slide up. I'd like you to bring back, um, go find a microwave safe dish or mug. And we'll see if, see if if you have one that that works in your microwave. So go ahead and go go grab that and bring it back. You don't have to log off. Just just go go grab it. Come back. Do a little scavenger hunt and come back with your microwave safe dish or mug. And then. Uh, Hold them up to the camera so we can see. Awesome. And I'm holding good. my uh, my my cups here. Awesome. While Sarah's to Sarah's see. watching her cups to see which are boiling first, that can show you your hot spots. It's really interesting. And just remember, everyone will have uh, the information on how to test your microwave, which I thought was interesting. I'm definitely going to do this test to see. Got it. Awesome. Will, thank you. Great. Now, who here um, t uh, t take off uh, off your mic if you'd like to or raise your hand? Who here uses plastic in the microwave? Is that a good, okay. Does it, does it say, okay. Does it say that it is microwave safe? If your dish is plastic, does it say it's microwave safe? Cause you have to be careful with some plastics. Josephine, do you wanna take your mic off and say? Not sure, not sure. Okay. If you have a question, you can take your mute off. I did no. What's that? I was gonna say I use plastic. Oh yeah. Yeah, you have to be careful. Yeah, some things, unless it says it's safe for the microwave, you should not use plastic in the microwave. So Sarah, are we ready? Yes, uh, mine, because I have the turntable, they all started to uh, boil about the same time. So there again, if you have the uh, turntable, that helps a little bit with your hot spots. Um, but if you don't and you have hot spots, one thing that you can do to uh, avoid that is spread your food out on your plate and everything. There again, rotate your plate and that, and then halfway through your cooking, take it and stir your food and then put it back in and that would help uh, with those alleviate those hot spots uh, that you might have and there again in the PowerPoint there's some directions on how to do that uh, so that so that you can uh, do that at home uh, some other things with with liquids in that make sure when you take them out of the microwave uh, the steam is, the food is very hot. The steam can burn you. It can give you third degree burns if you're not careful. And that, so um, if you're 
heating up formula for babies and things like that. There's directions on how to do that safely because you don't want to put that directly in the microwave. Older people, if you're making uh, tea or coffee for your grandparents or something, there's ways to heat those up so they don't get too hot uh, and, and scald the person and uh, burn them. Okay. The other thing is you need to keep your uh, microwaves clean. Uh, you have spills and stuff in it. Clean that up right away because uh, it's important to keep your microwave uh, clean. And uh, let me see here. And uh, one way you can do that is if you get some of the stuff is stuck in there, just put a little bowl of water, maybe with some vinegar or something. Turn it on, let it uh, go for about a minute. That and then the, of course the steam is in the microwave, and then you wipe it down. And everything to keep it clean clean around the gaskets and the doors and stuff that's very uh important and there again when you're taking stuff out of the microwave if you have your, your dish you see here okay so we have a dish and it's covered i'm just going to cover mine with a towel for now so so when you pull that out remember that's going to be hot so you want to lift the lid away from you I don't know if you can all see that, but lift your lid away from you so the steam goes in the other direction so you don't get burned. Because if you do it like this, that's all going to come back up uh, in your face. So uh, that's another safety tip uh, that you can do. Awesome, Sarah. So now, time-wise, you want to start our cooking demo. I know you have two great recipes that we're going to share with you guys. And um, which one do you want to do first? Okay, well, the first one I have here is with my hot dogs. And that is... Um, oh, I thought the, I thought you were going to do the, the two... Well, just the the egg. Okay. Yeah, the well, eggs one, and the apples. Okay, we can do that. So, uh, but there again, I'll just say, for the, for the hot dogs, you put them in the bun, you just roll them in the paper towel, and then place them in the microwave, and do them for a couple minutes and that and then they're done but make sure that then the steam cooks the uh the hot dogs nice. so that's also in in uh, on the uh, okay yeah. so we're that gonna is, do all the instructions are on the powerpoint yeah okay so we are going to do a quick breakfast here so i'm going to do a little bit of bacon and i do my bacon in the microwave all the time i don't do it in the skillet and that uh, some people put it in the oven is a good way to do it. So I take my bacon, everybody can see that, my two strips. I put it on my microwave safe plate. I put a paper towel down first. Here's my microwave safe plate. It's made for bacon actually because it's got the little grooves for the grease and that to go through. I put that on the paper towel. I fold it over and I put it in the microwave. Four pieces takes three minutes. So with two pieces, I'm going to try two minutes. And while that's cooking, oops, while that's cooking, I will do my uh, egg. So I have a little bit of butter. If you've ever cooked eggs in the microwave before, I've never cooked eggs in the microwave before. Has anyone? I've never. Actually, I'm going to melt my butter first here before I do my, uh, before I finish my bacon. And, and two, I, I forgot to mention this, is when you are cooking in the kitchen, no matter what, if you're using the microwave stove, if you're just making a sandwich or whatever, uh, make sure that you wash your hands 20 seconds with warm, hot, heavy water, tie your hair back, uh, and if all possible, I'm wearing an apron today because I'm sometimes a messy cook. So uh, you can wear that apron. Okay, I hope you can see me. If not, let uh, let us know. So crack my egg into my microwave safe bowl. It calls for milk, which I forgot to get out. So it calls for a uh, tablespoon of milk or you can put two tablespoons in however you like i like to add salt and pepper to my eggs but i'm watching my salt intake so i'll just put a little bit of pepper in there i uh, will take my whisk and i'll just whisk that all together can you see so we're sort of kind of making scrambled eggs 
And when you get it mixed up as much as you like, can everyone see that? On the counter. I'm going to go take my bacon out for time's sake. It's been there about a minute. You can leave it in as long as you want, however you like it to be cooked. I like mine a little more crispy, but as you can see, uh, it is getting done. So let's put our eggs in here. And I believe our directions say about for one egg, about 45 minutes. I'm only going to do mine for 40 to, uh, you can always put it back on. What did I forget to do? Anybody know? Right. You can what unmute, is, unmute Will. What is it? What did she forget? Did she forget to press start? No. I had trouble pressing start, but what did? Close the door. No. Oh, I know. I went Somebody back and corrected it. Ren said put the cover over the top. Cover yeah, the top oh, the cover. I forgot to cover my my bowl. You need to always cover it with something. The one direction says saran wrap, but I don't like to do a lot of plastics. Why well, I use a lot of paper towels when I do my microwave cooking. Okay, so let's see. It's been in 45 seconds. We take it out. I don't want to use that fork for that because it's got raw egg on it. So make sure that you do use a different fork because you don't want to use the raw, uh, like my whisk, I don't want to check it with that because it has raw egg and it can, you can get salmonella. But you can see here, a nice fluffy egg omelet. Now if you can, I'll kind of stir it up. It's not quite done enough for me. So I would want to put it back in for another 10 seconds. It said 45 seconds, but it was, so that didn't take long at all, did it? You toast your um, muffin. And uh, and now put your bacon on it, and you can have a croissant sandwich like you get at McDonald's. Do little pieces of ham. So there you have your your scrambled eggs. Everybody see that? Okay. All right. The next thing we're going to do. So that's breakfast. We we took care of breakfast. Now we just want a little bit of a snack. We've got a sweet tooth here. So I've already uh, pre-washed my apples. And I have my uh, apple core, and I'm going to cut my apples, and then I'm going to place them in another uh, microwave-safe dish. I'm going to lay the pieces in here. I probably could have used a little bigger dish. But you don't want to get too big, but then of course you don't want to get too small uh, either. So, and it calls for a little bit of brown sugar. So I have a teaspoon of butter in there and it's going to call for two uh, tablespoons of brown sugar. And there again, that is in your, uh, on the video. So just kind of sprinkle that around a little bit. And again, if you really like something sweet, you can add a little bit more of that. Okay, now it says to put this in here for a minute. It didn't say to cover it for that minute. Since we're using the apple and the fruit, it does say to cover it with saran wrap, which I am gonna do because I think it's gonna help steam it better and it's going to cook the apples uh, faster than if I use a paper towel. So what this minute is doing is just kind of breaking up the brown sugar, getting the butter uh, kind of melted around. Awesome. And it's almost there. And while you're doing that, remember, uh, here's a uh, for eggs in the microwave, they make special little things. You put your egg in there and scramble it up and cook it right in this little uh, egg uh, thing. So that's one thing. Uh, when you're measuring out your butter, and that the butter has little markings on here. So this comes from one uh, tablespoon. So I found the mark and I cut it. The eggs had a half of a tablespoon. So I uh, found that mark and uh, 
to get your measurements, or you can use measuring cups and spoons uh, when you're cooking. Okay. All right. So that's about all. Hot. So all we right. just had to stir it around, get the butter stirred around, and uh, maybe you could hold it up to the camera closer. Awesome. Can you see that? Yeah. Okay. So right. now it says that I need to put the rack on and I have to cook it for another two and a half to four minutes for them to get soft. So, well, while they're cooking, because I know we're getting, we're at the 2.30 mark. How about I just post up because we have so many, it's, there's so much to cooking and Sarah's gone over a bunch of information um, to help students learn how to better cook with a microwave, which like I said before, is um, actually a lot of what students in, uh, in college do, um, depending on your dorm situation, you might have um, access to a, a mini kitchen um, but if you only have a microwave in your room, it, these will be helpful tips um, to be able to cook. And um, so I want you to um, take a moment while the apples are finishing and go on to, I'm going to post it in the chat, but can you see this, the um, QR code? If you could take a survey really quickly before the end, before we wrap up. And I will um, post this in the chat. If you have an iPhone, you take a picture of this QR code. You can go directly to our survey for today. And if you could take a moment to do that, I will post the, the survey link in the chat as well. Yeah. So if you guys, yes, I do look at the survey responses. Thank you. Great question, Finian. And if um, I, I will add to that, I know some of you had put some great suggestions for future workshops in the last survey um, from our table setting and etiquette. Plus, some of you said to contact you directly that you wanted to learn more. Um, so basically, um, I will be doing that as well and um, following up with you on any questions. Feel free to email me um, with any questions or, or um, and I can put the QR code back up. Yes, let me do that. There we go. Can you see that, everyone? The QR code. If you could take a moment for our program and the programs at the um, University of Maryland through 4-H, we all do a lot of surveys, so it it's very helpful if you can, you know, provide some feedback. Um, obviously, there's a lot of information. I'll put the QR code if you missed it. It's also in chat. But there's so many different and uh, different directions you can go with um, cooking. But like I said, we wanted to focus on some quick tips and recipes for the microwave to help for anyone who's interested in a future future college. There's can you see the apples? Yeah. Awesome. I don't want to bend too much and I'll run out. So it's a little challenging. We've learned with the live video to uh, see to see a good view. So hopefully, um, you know the instructions. And like I said, there's an email coming shortly. If I don't already have your email, um, make sure that you send it to me. My email's in the chat carry at mbrt.org so um, I can send you the recap 
if you didn't um, list that, but I've never cooked apples in the microwave. I'm definitely going to try that because usually if you cook them any other way, it takes so long, but that was quick. Right. Yes. And I love apples. <laughs> Does anyone have any questions? I just wanted to let them know that uh, I got this uh, information and app from the 4-H uh, curricula. It's called Microwave Magic. And if any of you are in 4-H and would like these books, you can check with your extension office. And you can purchase these. I think they're like 2 to $3 and that. But there's all different types of uh, activities in here with, with the microwave. And as you get uh, better with the microwave, here's popcorn treats. There's one called Fabulous Fudge. And then as you, like you said, get better with the microwave, there's also a level B, level C for where they get into making meals and a lot of good information in these books. Even if you're not in 4-H and you just want the books to purchase uh and that and then of course online uh you can go online and if, if you have questions about your microwave just google it and uh it should be able to help you so. i see we have a couple questions go ahead and unmute yourself you have the hand raised will um so um how what is the best way to cook soup in the microwave soup uh, there again, you need to cover and get your microwave safe bowl. Um, I do a lot of my soups in my uh, in my corral dishes. Uh, right. You might need a casserole dish, and I mean, make sure that you cover it. If you don't have the turntable, cook it about uh, a minute or two, and then stir it up, and then so it's uh, hot all the way through, and you don't have any hot spots. All right. And I also do, like, if I'm cooking something, I try it, like, for 30 seconds and then do another 30 seconds. I don't put it on for, I used to, like, put it on for a minute, three minutes, and then things would get overcooked. So uh, do it in, in uh, small amounts of time, and then you can go back and, and redo it, and that will make your food uh, better. All right. You won't, won't overcook it. All right. Thanks for the advice. You're welcome. Awesome. Thanks, Will, for the question. I just um, want to wrap things up. I want to just tell you really quickly that if um, I'm going to be sending an email like right away after this and it will have the recipes so you can do all these yourself if you feel like trying them and you want to snap a picture of a selfie and send that to me via email and let me know if you're if you're willing, I will post it on our Facebook page and we can share your success stories. Let us know how how you uh, do with these recipes and um, we'd love to see see how it turns out. So I hope you enjoyed the cooking uh, 101 uh, today with Miss Bernard from 4-H. Thank you, Sarah. And if you want to thank her, put, please put your comments in the chat. And does anyone last minute, any other questions? No? All right. Well, just a reminder, next Tuesday, we're going to have our next workshop and it's going to be auto maintenance. So you'll get to learn some tips and tricks on how to um, take care of a car. And some of you maybe raise your hand are, are at driving age, maybe some of you. So um definitely it's one to tune in the links are all in the email um, previously that i sent you so um anytime you have any questions don't hesitate to reach out to me via email so thank you guys for joining us and thank you miss sarah for a wonderful um demonstration and i'll send that email shortly so see you guys have a good weekend you too. Thank you.